got a little bit of command line yoga. Hopefully you brought your command line yoga mat. All right, give it up for Niraj. <laughs> Command line yoga. Um, yo this is like a, you know, it's a mathematical thing. We used to spend a lot of time around mathematicians because they're going to say that we're going to do command line yoga a lot and it's it's, it's just like uh, <coughs> misbelief because mathematicians generally don't look like they spend a lot of time doing yoga and really what they mean is that they're doing this kind of a thing. So, um, like basically, mathematical yoga is just um, it's it's like a, a series of things that you do that don't quite qualify as a skill, but that are like, you know, somewhat relaxing. And uh, uh, and I, it, it occurred to me that actually building command line utilities or just making command line interfaces to your code actually has the same property of, uh, it's not really a skill and it's actually relatively easy to do, but not enough people really do it uh, when they're writing Python code. Uh, if, you, if you spend a lot of time around data scientists, you might actually be familiar with like this sort of extreme version of like what people do instead of writing command line utilities, which is like the production Jupyter notebook. Um, and so, you know, basically data science teams end up having like a bunch of Jupyter notebooks that they just uh, duplicate, modify, you know, put some parameters on the top and then like they just run them against production like all the time. Uh, so this is, this is just my attempt to make that situation better. Uh, it's supposed to be relaxing. I was thinking of having music actually with this talk, but uh, I thought that would take it over the top. So, yeah. But let's uh, let's actually do some command line yoga. So let's say that we have a very simple Python function. So this is this is a Python function that indexes the uh, the occurrences of words in a document. It doesn't do any fancy tokenization or anything. Literally, it just oh, it's here. Um, it takes a, a string which is the document body and it ret returns a dictionary that maps each occurrence of a word, lowercase, uh, each occurrence of the word in the, in the string to the list of uh, positions, uh, you know, at which that word occurs in the string. Simple. Um, let's say that I want to test this function. I could write unit test, blah, blah, blah. I don't really like to do that. I have a bunch of like text files on my computer and I want to use those text files to, uh, to test, test this function. Uh, so I write a simple command line interface. Uh, how, how many of you regularly use the arc parse library to write command line interfaces for your code? Uh, less than half of you, so I, I hope that this, this talk will actually end up being useful. Um, okay, so here's what I did, because uh, live coding can lead to a lot of, <laughs> I mean, can lead to disasters. I made some videos. Would you guys prefer for me to write the code or actually show you the code? You can choose, choose your own adventure. Code? Video? Video, video okay, yeah. All right, let's look at this. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so here's uh, here's me from a week ago writing a video. So if this is my command line interface. Uh, I checked the help. I have a bunch of texts by Charles Darwin that I downloaded from Project Gutenberg. And uh, I'm just indexing, indexing all the stuff in there and uh, writing it out to the JSON file. And this is roughly what it looks like. I just did a head on the JSON file because I just want to get like a bunch of output so that Darwin, Darwin looks verbose. Um, so that's, it was relatively, it was very easy to write this command line interface. Um, it was just a few lines of Python code. Um, actually, this is an error that I always make when I, when I write, when I, you know, make these interfaces. Uh, this messes up the usage string. So this should be a keyword argument that says description. My bad. Uh, but basically you just create an, uh, an argument parser used from the arc parse module and you just add an argument. I've added a positional argument to my command line interface that's called in file. Um, it accepts a file. Uh, it accepts a file and opens it as a read-only uh, buffer. And it <coughs> actually, I haven't set a default here yet, so my documentation is wrong. What else is new? Um, once I've defined the arg once I've defined my argument parser, I parse the arguments from the command line. That's what this parse arg function does. Uh, method of the argument parser. And then I just read, I just read the entire body of the document from the file and I dump the output of index of index document into std output. That's, it, it's just, didn't take very much time to write. It's very easy to write a command line interface like that. And uh, I hope I've convinced you. I don't know if I have, but uh, okay. 
But uh, you know, normally, if I'm testing, I don't have like a bunch of text by Charles Darwin available to me, and I like to use Bash a lot. And when I'm testing, I just want to be able to test with uh, with any old string that I come up with off the top of my head. So I'd like to be able to pipe the text that you know, pipe the random text that I came up with to test against into my command line interface. So this is this is sort of the next thing that I would like to do, the, the next asana, right? Um, how do you do that? So in the previous version. I was just telling uh, my command line utilities to open open the file that was passed um, that was passed to it in as a, as a, in read only mode and, and you know read the contents of it. Uh, that won't work anymore because uh, not, that won't work when I stream when I stream you know when when I pipe my text to the command line utility because now it has to read from SVD and things. Um, that's actually very easy to. To handle in arc parts. So if I want to just pipe input into my command line utility from you know from something else in my in my shell, all I have to do is in this case it's a positional argument. So I just say that the number of when so there's this nr keyword argument in uh, you know when I add an argument to a parser I can specify number of arguments as question mark as a string. What this means is uh, it's either zero or one. And uh, so if it's if if the number of arguments is one, then it behaves the same way that this this did. So it, I can actually access that on this args object that I parsed from the command line. If it's zero, then I just set a default of uh, sys.std, and that that satisfies the same file interface. So uh, <coughs> I, can, I can work with that the same way that I work with the files. Um, so I parse the args. So basically, I, the only two things that have changed are these two lines uh, from the previous version, and uh, and then I just do the same thing. And uh, I have a before and after video. Let me show you the after video. So in this case, I, I just concatenated them and then it just works on the same screen. Yeah, sure, sorry. Uh, is that good? Uh, I can do one. I'm using a thing called ASCINEMA. I don't know if you guys have heard of this. ASCII Nema to do the video, so you can record from your terminal. It, it's not actually a video, it's just like a recording of the keystroke and the, and the code that it does. Um, okay, so, so, so basically streaming works, and it, it's just as simple as using sys.std, and it's just like the actual file, uh, file contents. All right, good. Very easy to work with pipes, which you should always want to do if you're using your shell. Uh, although I don't know how to do it. Uh, next thing that you might want to do with a command line utility is uh, you might want to um, reuse the code uh, with like superficial changes on the output. So actually, this is this is the prime example of like people creating you know different production Jupyter notebooks uh, with like small changes across them that do slightly different things. Uh, the, the the thing that you should be doing is just if you were using a command line utility, just create subcommands. You can make subcommands on your uh, on your argument parser. Uh, so th this is this is a little bit more involved. I mean, it's like it's pretty easy to do, but again, a lot of people don't do it just because it's like slightly more of a pain in the ass than just creating an argument parser that doesn't have subcommands. Um, that you basically have to create a sub parser group on your on your argument parser. So this is this is the thing. And then you have to add parse, parsers for each of your individual subcommands into that subcommand group. So basically, I, th I say that I'm going to add a bunch of parsers into my, uh, I'm going to add a bunch of subcommands into my original argument parser. And then for each subcommand that I want. So the, the subcommands that I want over here is I want, I want to have the original indexing functionality that I had um, before, you know, where I just index the words that occur in a document by their position. And I also want to do this extra little thing, which is maybe I don't want the whole index. Maybe I just want to count the words, right? So like your standard like word count uh, example. Um, they're both going to take the same argument. So this is a pattern that I frequently use when I'm creating these subcommand parsers. Is I just create a function that will populate the sort of child parsers with whatever arguments that I need. There's no graceful way to do it in Python. In other programming languages, there are very graceful ways to do it. <coughs> like a go meetup. Um, I'm not going to talk about how to do it in Python. 
and this is this is generally common. So I just add common R to each of the uh, each of the individual child parsers. Um, both the index parser and the count parsers the parser both of them get the common args added to them, which is that positional thing that I was doing before. Um, <clears throat> Um, the other thing that you need when you're so so this is what the arc parse functionality actually recommends. Uh, when you want to handle a subcommand, you can handle it using this func uh, this func attribute on the args object. So basically, this is this is the key thing over here. So after I parse the argument, I call this func method of args on args itself, and that's what actually handles the subcommand. Um, and I set this func handler on each individual parser like this. So I used it set default. So the count parser has a count handler, which basically just does an indexing. And then before it returns the result, it takes the length of the index array rather than the index array itself. The index handler does what the function was doing before, which is just indexing the dot. Um, and I set these handlers as the default value for the func attribute on the args object. It, it's a little bit confusing, but uh, that, that's why that's why this is yoga. It's like it's not yoga. Yoga is not difficult, but um, it, but it's not particularly difficult. It's just something that you have to get used to. And that's uh, this is one thing that you get used to, and then you can write really nice utilities that have subcommands, and you can reuse your code without having to duplicate it. subcommand. Uh, the next thing you might want to do is you might want to add uh, flags, like uh, so flags that signify some sort of a Boolean condition if they're present or uh, absent. Um, so in this case, there's a very natural sort of flag that we might want to add on the count subcommand, which which is that we might want to have we might want to index the document separately from actually doing a word count. So we might want to store the index and like you know we have JSON format anyway. So we might want to store the index. And then do a count on the on the stored index rather than the original document, and we might also want to sort the result of the count by by the frequency with which the words occur. Uh, so doing this is uh, quite simple. You just add. So before we added a positional argument, uh, you know, called count onto the count parser. Now we're going to add uh, sort of this <coughs> action argument dash dash index, and we're going to we're going to specify that action is stored true. So what this tells arc parse is that when it parses the arguments from the command line, if it sees dash dash index, it's not going to try and find a value to index. It's just going to store whether index appeared or not. So in the arg namespace object, you get either true or false, depending on whether or not dash dash index was passed on the command line. Same thing for sort, and that, that's what this looks, this is what this looks like. First, first I index the index the uh, original species. I store the index in original species.json, and then I try to count the number of uh, the, the number of occurrences of each word uh, from the index. And I'm, I'm just counting the amount of time that it takes. So the re the reason I'm doing this is that it should take much less time. It shouldn't have to wait much longer. This takes that much time, and it, it actually, I should have shown, uh, now I'll show that it starts to take longer. So, me from a week ago thought it was slightly longer, but this is the, uh, this is the, okay, or this is the function. Alright, so next piece of yoga is, uh, oh, actually, so something interesting happened. Which you would have seen when I reached the end of the that example, but there's no reason to go to that video again. Um, basically, if you try to interrupt, uh, if you try to like, let's say that you pipe 
spike your output account through more, or if you try to like you know do an interrupt on it, uh, you actually get this broken pipe error in Python. So the way to avoid that is to actually just catch the broken pipe error. So um, you know when you're doing when you're processing. Uh, so in this case, when I'm processing the output, I just try to do a print, but I catch the catch the broken pipe error exception. And if I find that there's a broken pipe error, I just like break out of my output. Um, this is just something something useful to watch out for when you're when you're sort of using Python. Um, and then finally, I might want to add uh, some typed arguments. So so the way that Artbot handles types is actually quite elegant. Um, so what I, what I'm going to do over here on my count subcommand, which which counts the word occurrences for each word that occurs in you know, whatever document it's processing, um, I'm going to add a greater than dash dash gt and less than dash dash lt uh, option to the to the count parser, which which only displays words that appear uh, more times than the greater than argument and less times than the less than <laughs> argument. Um, the way that I do that is I just Go to the count parser. I add a dash dash gt argument. I say that the type is in. Now, the thing that you need to know about type is that type can be any callable, any callable that accepts a string as its input and returns like whatever type you want as the output. Um, these are optional arguments. If these arguments are not passed on the command line, the args object is going to have a none when you try to extract these objects from it. Um, okay, I do that, and this is what. Like. I feel like me from a week ago died really slowly. Because of its copy paste. But uh, it only shows uh, words that occur to the frequency in which the pipe is pumped out. Um, He's also trying to show you that you can, uh, when you pass options on the command line, you can use space, you can use the keyboard, the, the keys on the keyboard. Arg parse is quite sophisticated in how it processes arguments from the command line. Okay, so that's argument types. And then there's a few extra tricks uh, that you can use. Like when I'm when I'm trying to build something really quick and dirty, like let's say that I want to build a command line interface for a function. Uh, then you can use Python's bars built in. What bars does uh, when you apply it? To an an arg parse namespace is it turns that namespace into a dictionary. So you can use bars to turn your namespace into a dictionary and then unpack it when you invoke a function. So you can do something like my func <coughs> star star bars args, and that like then you can just accept the uh, function keyword arguments from the command line, um, and then you can build your own type validators that return that that do extra validation on the input. Um, all right, that's uh, that. That's the end of our yoga session. And if you want, you can uh, you can go to cloyoga. You can go um, here to actually see the presentation again if you want. So you can access it from this uh, back here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all right. I think we have time for maybe one question, if there are any, or is everyone too twisted up and respectful? <laughs> Or is it hot yoga? I don't know. I didn't bring my yoga jokes. <laughs> yes, one question. You briefly mentioned that um, you thought Go had a very elegant way of creating command line interfaces. Could you tell us the difference? Very briefly. Uh, co <laughs> Cobra. I, I like the Cobra library. The, the Cobra library is a really great uh, uh, library that you can use to create command line interfaces. Uh, KubeCPL uses it. Helm uses it. Like infrastructure guys love Cobra. So that's the that's the one. Yeah, it's it's interesting because uh, this is like our parse is in the standard library, but at the same time, so is uh, opt parse and uh, so is get opt. There's like technically three command line parsing uh, libraries in the standard library, and there are even more outside. So um, Python has many options for you to choose from, and not just ones that start with dash dash. All right. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Niraj. Thank you.